God. He was in church. Please, let me ask you, do you know yet the voice of God? Can you sit here and tell me you know the voice of God when he's sitting, when, when he speaks to you? He said he did not yet know he was fully amassed in church. He was not just a, a bench woman. He kept mass. He ate the communion. See, the fact that you eat communion, even the fact that you sing, the fact that you dance like David did, does not mean you know the voice of God. In the same verse, neither was there the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Mm. Shall I tell you something? God had a certain specific understanding which Samuel did not have. There was a specific understanding that was acquired of him. See, I want you to see something. Samuel in verse 1 was mentioned as a child. In verse 7, God was saying, in verse 7 he says, the voice of the Lord was not yet revealed to him. Not only that, this is a child we are talking. Mm. We're talking about a child. The voice of God was not yet revealed to him. And what after that in that same verse, said neither was the word of God yet revealed to him. As a child, let me ask you, imagine you as an adult. Mm. If the scripture says, the child, to be says concerning the child who, who was in the house of God, who heard the sermon, who ate the communion, who played the keyboard, he sang with a beautiful voice. The child said the voice of God was not yet known to him. And the word of God was not yet revealed to him. I can tell you something. There was a specific understanding that God was speaking about. There was a specific understanding that God knew that he should have. See, it is not just good enough to say you're a child of God. It is not. It is not just good enough to claim you're a born again child of God. No. It is not just good enough to say, I go to church. Rather, it is better that you say, I know the voice of God. If the scripture says, this is my sheep, hear my voice. They know my voice. And they follow me, don't they? So if my sheep hear my voice, they know my voice. They follow me. It means that no false shepherd can take them away. Because when they, once they hear the false shepherd, they'll run. Right. I want to ask you, church, if you notice the messages we've been looking at for a long time has to do with inner searching. The Lord wants you to go home and search your heart. Search your soul. Ask yourself, do I, where do I fit in in this message? Hello, church, please, one second. Let me ask you a question. How many people went home last night Last, last Sunday to think about the message. I did. You did. How many people went on to think about it? Now, when you thought about it, what conclusion did you come within yourself? Hmm. Did the scripture judge you? Yes. Were you guilty? Yes. yes. You were guilty. Yes. Now, have you made plans to repent from that? Oh, yeah. yes. Have you started walking according to that plan? No, that yes, the, the last yes was not very strong. <laughs> the last yes wasn't very strong. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see the funny? You read the scripture, and the scripture said, Don't blame another person. He said, Don't point fingers. He said, Turn it back when I say, I am guilty. I repent from it. I know a man of God, he says, when, Don't tell me you're fat because you didn't know how you became fat. Yeah. He said you didn't go to bed fat. You didn't go to bed slim and woke up fat. Mm -hmm. He said you ate the food. He said go and stop eating. Then you will lose weight. Shall so I tell you something? The scripture is there to make you and I realize where we are going wrong. So I tell you, what does it take a man who is going to the wrong direction? What does it take for the man to turn back? A U-turn. Mm. And when a man does a U-turn, Sister, it's never work in progress. It's back to the right direction. Mm. It takes a U-turn for a man who is going the wrong direction to go to go to the right direction. Until you make a U-turn, you cannot go to the right direction. Now, this man, child, is in church. You as an adult, you're in church. 
church. Mm. God requires a specific understanding of scripture from you. Mm -hmm. He said the voice of God was not known to him. Scripture was not yet revealed to him. Yet he was in church. Shall I tell you something? Mm. God is waiting upon you to receive understanding. He's waiting upon you to make a move. See, faith that has no work is dead. Mm -hmm. That is scripture. Mm. So if you are sitting and waiting for the day, miracles will rain from heaven. I have good, I have news for you. Mm. That day will never come. Mm. I hope that the Holy Ghost comes. Yes, if you're sitting and waiting for things to fall from heaven, bam, bam, I have news for you. That day will never come. There's no miracle that happens without someone praying them down. Mm -hmm. Every miracle you see, someone has prayed concerning them. Every miracle there are, someone has brought them down to prayer. For every miracle, there's someone who has stayed awake praying. For every miracle, there's someone who has chosen not to go about praying, but to go about praying. This boy Samuel and the Lord and the scripture says that the voice of the Lord was not yet known to him and the word of God was not yet revealed to him. Praise God. Now I want you to see because the voice of God was not known to him and the word of God was not revealed to him, when God was calling what happened? He, didn't know. he was answering to the wrong person. Mm. You see that when choose not to grow in wisdom, when we choose not to grow in the understanding, when we choose not to walk in the word as given by God, according in context with what he's saying, we keep walking and going to answer to the wrong people. Mm. See Samuel, God called him. <laughs> Imagine God calling Samuel, but he went to answer who? Eli. Eli. Not once, not twice, but three times. But thank God for the life of Eli. That's another point there. See, when God calls you, he doesn't call you with a voice you do not know. Hello? Mm. When God calls you, he wouldn't speak to you with a strange voice. He wouldn't say, oh, my daughter, my name is God. No, 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 no. He will call you with a voice you already so what I'm talking about, listen to this, please listen to this. God called Eli. But Eli answered who? God called Samuel. But Samuel answered to Eli. And Eli realized what was happening and said to him, No, I didn't call him. Go later when he calls again. Tell him, here I am, Lord speak. Shall I tell you something? God has put me here so that I can speak on his behalf concerning you. So when I speak, it's not because I've gone home and dreamt them up. No. It is because the Lord has told me. When I stand there, it's not because, oh, I have nothing else to do. No. It is because I brought me to say it. And when I say it, I will not miss what I keep quiet. The reason is because when you see what happened afterwards in the life of Samuel, imagine if um, Eli was not there to give him direction what would have happened. Samuel would have been going to the wrong person because he's done it well three times already. He's done twice until the third time. Shall I tell you something again? You see the word of God. Whenever the word is for you, it will never sound funny. It will never sound good. Whenever the word of God is for you, it will never sound funny. And neither will it sound good. The reason is because God wants it to have effect in your life. He wants you to go home to think about it. He wants you to go home and say, hey, I need to make a change. He wants you to go home and say, God, you're speaking to me. How? Why? When? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If Samuel, the man, the young boy, who grew up in the presence of the Lord, who walked in the presence of the Lord, who went to the altars, if he could have missed it, if mm. not for Eli, imagine you and I, adults. Mm. I want you to take this word.
towards home. I want you to take this one. And in verse 10, in verse 8, and the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. So he missed it how many times? Three times. See, let me ask you something. See this, see this, please. The voice of the Lord was rare. In verse 1, the voice of the Lord was rare. There was no open vision. Let me ask, what about if God had called um, Samuel once a year? Hmm. That means it took Samuel three years to realize that it was God calling him. Supposing that God was calling Samuel once in two years. Shh. That means it took Samuel six years to realize that God was calling him. Supposing God was calling Samuel once in three years. How many years? That means it took Samuel nine years. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to see how important these things are. It is good to be in a place where your pastor at least can see because Eliza is the wax thing. Mm. He wasn't able to see. He was out of favor with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, you as a Christian, you're not just here to warm seats. You're not just here to sit. You're not just here to say I am. You're here to prove the God you serve. And if the God you serve indeed is a living God, why don't you prove him? When you prove him, pray he will answer. Praise God. Hallelujah. What am I saying this morning? From last week's message, I want you to go home. Look at the life of Samuel. Look at what happened in these verses. And in that first thing, very quickly, my last reading. And, he, and the Lord came and stood and called at other times, as at other times. Hello. See, God actually came down and was standing calling Samuel. Because as other times, that means each time God calls Samuel, all the three times, before the fourth time, God came standing by him and called mm. Samuel. Mm. Mm -hmm. God was by but he passed God to go to answer to him. Hey. God forbid, not for me. So of us, God has standing, God has been standing in front of us, calling us, but we are, we are busy looking at people behind us. That's not my portion. That's not my portion. He said, God came down and stood and called him like other times. Imagine what a wonderful life it would have been if you realized in the beginning that God was calling you. Because standing there. I don't know if I want to look at it as a disrespect. He went past God. No wonder the scripture said that his eyes were blind. He didn't know the Lord. So he saw him. He didn't recognize him. He walked past him. said, excuse me, sir. How many times has the Lord called you? Standing there calling you. And you have excused him and walk past to see another person. I want you to go home and think about these things. Think about them. See, until you think about them, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even try. You wouldn't notice where you're going wrong. You wouldn't notice where you're going right. Until you think about them, you wouldn't even try to walk in the right direction. Praise God. Father, we thank you. 